Hi guys, my name is Vuvu and this is Vuvu Vena Reads. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new on here, please consider pressing the red subscribe button down below. If you are a returnee, a member of the fam, bam. Welcome back fam and thank you so much for joining me once more. On today's first chapter Friday, we are picking up one from Cassava Republic, which is... The title is long, so I have to read it. La Camino Bringing Ice Cream to the Sun by Sarah Lapido Manica. So if you're curious to hear a little bit more about this and how it starts off, please do stay tuned. So Bubavena on the score reads is an amazing book reviewer, also YouTuber. She reviews books on YouTube. And if I'm not mistaken, she also has a blog as well. So please, if for your connection with literature, get in touch with or follow at V-U-V-U-V-E-N-A underscore reads. She is based in South Africa and I think it is also extremely important to follow literary content creators who are based outside of, who are based outside of the West and in continental Africa because they do a really good job of bridging the gap. We appreciate you, Vuvu, for bringing us Turning Pages and for bringing us your booktube channel. You know, this is a chance for people to actually see some people that i really enjoy please consider pressing the red subscribe button down below and if you're a returnee welcome back fam Vuvu, Vu, you're amazing thank you so much for your time so as per usual we're gonna talk about the cover um i absolutely love the colors they remind me of an ankara print for some reason but i absolutely absolutely love the vibrancy of these colors that are chosen this does definitely look like the sun melting so ice cream melting sun i think that they do have you know a kind of link to it um the title like a mule bringing ice cream to the sun is very broad for me i don't know what to expect um it says here that sarah lapido maniga was shortlisted for the goldsmith's prize in 2016 all right so let's find out a little bit more about miss sarah she's so gorgeous that's sarah it says here sarah lapido maniga was raised in nigeria and has lived in kenya France and England. She holds a PhD from the University of California, Berkeley, and teaches literature at San Francisco State University. Her first novel, Independence, was published by Legend Press in London, Cassava Republic Press in Abuja, and Weaver Press in Harare. Sarah sits on the board of Hedgebrook and San Francisco's Museum of the African Diaspora and was the chair of judges for the it is salad prize for literature in 2015 sarah is host of aussie's video series right sarah was shortlisted for the goldsmith's prize 2016 for her novel like a mule bringing ice cream to the sun okay so there's a lot of influence here nigeria zimbabwe no kenya i almost said zimbabwe why did i say zimbabwe oh, i saw harare Okay, Kenya, France, England. Okay, okay, chia. Okay, so um, I love the fact that the synopsis is a little bit short. I feel like it still won't give away too much, which is part of the intrigue, I think, for myself. Um, the back here is just a claim for the book. So the synopsis reads. Morayo da Silva, a cosmopolitan Nigerian woman, lives in hip san francisco on the cusp of 75 she is in good health and makes the most of it enjoying road trips in her vintage porsche chatting to strangers and recollecting characters from her favorite novels then she has a fall and her independence crumbles without the support of family she relies on friends and chance encounters as morayo morayo recounts her story moving seamlessly between past and present we meet dawood a charming palestinian shopkeeper sage a feisty homeless grateful dead devotee and antonio the poet whom morayo desired more than her ambassador husband like a mule bringing ice cream to the sun is a subtle and mesmerizing meditation on aging friendships friendship and loss it is also a nuanced portrait of the erotic yearnings of an older woman 
Okay, Sarah. All right, girl. <laughs> okay. So this one, like I'm saying, was published by Cassava Republic uh, in 2016. Okay. So here goes chapter one. The font is quite good as well. It's really not that bad. I might actually pick up this one after <laughs> after reading um the chapter and actually whiz through it if I can. It is all of um in case you were wondering, a hundred and eighteen pages long. So chapter one. The place where I live is ancient, old but sturdy, our landlady tells us. 500 Balgrave is so strong, apparently, that it withstood the 1906 earthquake. Did it even bust a single crack, is what the landlady says. But between you and me, I wouldn't bet on history repeating itself. It's the reason why I live on the top floor. For if this building collapses, then at least they won't have far to dig me out of. I mean, far to dig me out. Of course, I don't wish any harm to my neighbors, especially not the gentleman living just beneath me. As for the silent woman on the ground floor who insists on calling me Mary because she finds Morayo too hard to pronounce, well, that's another story. But I wish even her no harm. I'd like to imagine that when the big one strikes, we'd all be gathered at my place enjoying a glass of wine and we'd ride the whole thing out and live to tell the tale but who knows when the earth finally decides that it's tired of fidgeting and needs a proper stretch i might be the one walking downstairs if that's the case then the only survivors will be my books hundreds of them to keep each other company our building used to be a single family house but now it's home to four separate units and i've been living in one of these for 20 years this must be somewhat annoying to my poor landlady for in this city of rent controls she could charge a new tenant much more than she charges me not that the apartment is anything spectacular mind you it's just one small bedroom kitchen living room and bathroom but it's the view that matters in san francisco and my view you, oh yes my view is magnifique when you stand at the kitchen sink you can see all the colorful houses of hate ashbury and beyond these the eucalyptus and pine forests of the presidio that stretches across to the bay where on a clear day the water shimmer as the water shimmer azure blue so i have no intention of moving and the lane lady must know that what she lo loses in range she gains by having someone reliable like me keeping a watchful eye on the property for i like this building am ancient ancient if you're going by nigerian standards we have outfoxed the female life expectancy by nearly two decades and because i've lived in this building so long i know all the comings and goings such that on a morning like this even before the mailman reaches the third floor i've heard his footsteps lee Wee is the is in the habit of taking the stairs two at a time and when he arrives i'm waiting for him i wouldn't normally open the door in my dressing gown but lee we is no stranger um, besides, this is a city where people walk their dogs and take their children to school in their pajamas. So here I stand in my magenta silk dressing gown, barefoot and brushing the tops of my toes with those toe rings against the rough sisal of my welcome mat. Hello, Dr. Morayo. Lots of mail for you today, says Liwi, um, presenting a ne neat, neat and stack with such finesse that i'm reminded of a samurai bowing before his empress palms extended head slightly bent the box was full he announced looking puzzled until i smile and then he smiles because we both know there's nothing surprising about my mailbox being full that's the way i leave it these days because i like him stopping by we enjoy our little chats until it's time for lee wee to return to work and he tips his postal hat to bid me good day 
and out of respect for his kindness i always spend some minutes after he's gone sorting through the political party mailings the letters from amnesty and the sierra club occasionally if a colorful postcard or a handwritten envelope falls from the pile i get excited thinking it might be from a friend even though i know it's usually just a prettier form of junk whatever happened to all those friends who used to send letters and postcards now people just zap off emails or no notes at all and then of course so many friends have died i flick half-heartedly through granta and car and win and then stop to help to make myself a cup of tea into which I dip a ginger biscuit. Yes, I know I'm procrastinating and if I don't pay attention, I might be late with some bills. They don't give me, they don't give you much time to pay these days, but I don't let this trouble me. Once upon a time, I was diligent, extraordinarily diligent, but life's too short to fuss over such small things. That at least is what I tell myself until the diligence never truly lost reappears and I return to the post today's letter today there's a letter from the department of motor vehicles which form with forms attached i glance at it mentally checking no 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 and no to a history of high blood pressure heart attacks and diabetes i presume the letter is routine but hold on it's my birthday soon so maybe that's what this is all about why when one gets to a certain age must every reminder of a birthday carry a tinge of gloom i look at the letter again and notice that the deadline for the re reply was last week bother better call i dial then cradle the phone between my ears and shoulder while unraveling my night time conros which i do on occasion to keep my hair tangle free I don't mind waiting, but the automated message gives me the option of receiving a return call without losing my place in line. How civilized. I leave my name and number, and now, hands-free, I unravel my last plate while pondering what to wear. In my wardrobe sits a stack of brightly colored fabrics. Some were gifted to me to some more gifts to myself others presented from presents from friends nowadays i enjoy wearing native attire more much more than i used to especially when it's sunny today i select a new ankara in brilliant in vibrant shades of pink and blue and bring it to my nose then i open the folds of cloth i'm delighted to find the smell of lagos markets still buried in the cotton diesel fumes, hot palm oil, burning firewood. The smell evokes the flamboyance and craziness of the mega city that once was mine in between my husband's diplomatic postings. It was a place of parties and traffic jams, the city of my husband's people, my many nephews, nieces, and godchildren. I've often thought of returning to Lagos and sometimes dream that I've already moved back to this big crazy city where everyone calls me auntie or mama the land of constant sunshine and daily theater i think of cousins and wonder what it might be like to reconnect with them to live nearby i've even contemplated living closer to caesar not because i miss him particularly but because we share in memories of people and places that few others now remember but even as i find myself searching the internet for homes in ikoi I know that I'm not likely to feel at home in such a crowded city. I remember how it floods during rainy season. I remember the power cuts and the unruly traffic. And I remember how few bookshops there are, how few cafes and museums. Deep down, I know that my desire to return comes more from nostalgia than a genuine longing to return. Those days of being able to deal with the daily headaches of Lagos life are gone. In any case, it's just Joe's, the city of my childhood, and I'd most like that I'd most like to return. But this is even more implausible. Just used to be a place of serenity, of cool, plateau weather, not the anxious city it is today with the constant fear of ran random acts of violence. And now that my parents are gone and school friends have moved away or died, all that really remains are the memories. 
I side putting the original fabric aside and opting for another this one gold and green wafting eco-friendly lavender scented detergent I wrap the material around my waist keeping my legs spread hip distance so as not to pull too tightly then I wrap it again and finish with a secure tuck at the side I choose a contrasting yellow material to wind around my hair and then check in the bathroom mirror patting down the top of my afro satisfied i rub pink gloss on my lips and blot with a tissue off comes my glasses and then two quick brushes of the eyebrows towards the temples with a baby toothbrush kept just for this purpose i remember reading somewhere how this draws people's attention to the eyes eyes said the apostle matthew are the lamp of the body and if according to something else i read recently eyes are the one thing that never age then this is a good thing i remove my smudged glasses and clean them with warm soap soapy water holding on to the rims as i was taught as a child I don't remember when I first started wearing glasses. It feels like a lifetime, but I do remember Kano Eye Hospital and the drive from Jaws, which was a long and bumpy one across dirt roads. The appointment always scheduled for the following day was also an all-day affair, from waiting on the wooden benches outside to sitting in the large optician's chair. The doctor liked to take his time choosing from drawers filled with rows of silver-rimmed spheres arranged neatly like biscuits in a tin. I used to imagine him having to choose between shortbread and ginger snaps before slotting the wafer-thin lens into the bulky steel contraption placed on my nose. Better or worse, he would ask, and sometimes it was better, sometimes worse, but always I remember his breathing his breath smelling sweetly of mangoes which was how i came to believe he was poor mangoes were free in nigeria anyone who would pluck them off the trees so much so that fa father would pay someone during mango season to collect the fruit so it wouldn't fall and rot i've since wondered if the doctor suffered from diabetes wasn't sweet breath a sign of this disease but Perhaps the man just liked mangoes and then and when it came time for him to peer into my eyes with his sharp yellow light I used to find it impossible to do as instructed rather than stare at the bridge of his freckled nose I preferred to look at my own eyes reflected in his where they appeared shiny and beautiful like strawberry jam drops it was always a mystery to me how my vision could be perfect up close but so poor for, for distance then the phone rings how can i help you i answer smiling because the voice on the other end sounds familiar sunil i try placing the name oh yes ma'am this is the dmv and i'm just returning your call from the DMV, I repeat, DMV, did you say? Oh, yes, of course. I remember now, but I've forgotten the good excuse I was intending to use. Now I just have to ask for an extension to the deadline. Well, ma'am, give me one moment, the man replies. I need to check with my supervisor. Can I place you on hold for one moment? Of course, I smile, picturing the young man sitting in a call center somewhere in India next to his metal lunchbox, layered with alu, paratha, and pickles. And while I listened to the gentle jazz that temporarily takes his place, I play the conversation we'll have when he returns. How surprised he'll be when I disclose that I once lived in his country, when I tell him how I miss all my friends at the spice markets i'll tell him that i still keep car cardamom and cumin in my cupboard to remind me of those days i could even tell him where i got the toe rings or my silk curtains which also came from bombay mumbai and wasn't it just a few minutes earlier when i was tying my wrapper that i was thinking how easy it was to tie a wrapper in comparison to multiple folds of cloth needed for a sari i'd always been useless with saris ma'am yes yes that's fine ma'am 
I can add one more week. Marvelous, thank you, I say relieved. So tell me, sir, where are you calling from today? Is it bright and sunny? Ma'am, I'm calling from Sacramento, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, It could. I could say it's quite fine. Oh, I say deflated. Sacramento was such a disappointing capital city. So lacking in character. No hills or mountains, just a flat like just flat like a plate what a shame he wasn't calling from india and me ready to exchange a few greetings in hindi thank god i didn't embarrass myself still there was something familiar sounding about his voice i wonder if he's a former student i miss my students but he was but if he was one of mine then why doesn't he recognize my name or voice okay ma'am he says just to confirm now your doctor has until the 12th my doctor for the physical ma'am physical i glance again at the letter the attached forms have to be completed by a doctor flipping through them i see that in addition to the physical and mental health test an eye test is also required tell me what your name what's your name again sanjay is it customary for the dmv to send out these letters actually it's sunil I detest some imp I detect some impatience, but what does he have to be annoyed about? Actually, he continues, we don't actually do this, ma'am. I mean, what I mean is that it comes from head office. So like all I know is that this happens if someone reports you for let's say like actually careless or like reckless driving. Careless, I ask, because it's his syntax that merits the label careless not m my driving well i'm sure that sometimes i've parked a little too far from the pavement and maybe occasionally too close to the pavement or curb as you may call it but surely these are just minor mistakes i pause waiting for him to laugh and when he doesn't i continue undeterred I suppose that once or twice my car might have stalled going uphill, but isn't that to be expected in San Francisco? You see, my car is a manual one. That's an old manual car. It's actually a collector's item. But by now, I've concluded that he won't know what a 911 is, not to speak of my 993. He is probably one of those dream dreams of owning a lexus with gold rimmed hubcaps yes ma'am anything else i can do for you ma'am no darling i mumble no i repeat because now i'm annoyed at having slipped into using this endearment which was a mannerism i'd once vowed never to adopt i saw how it aged a friend even more than her smart smattering of silver hair and ver varicose veins that she was so fond of bemoaning. Calling a young man darling or sweetheart made you sound old, but now I'd just done it myself without even thinking. Chow chow ta, I whisper, failing to find a suitable English wo word. Belatedly, hearing the dull hum of the telephone line, I realized that my young American darling has hung up. Fuck, bugger, I say startled by the crassness of my own language not as bad as the saccharine saccharine i'd used earlier but still my father would be appalled if he could hear me now i waved the letter to the heavens in a gesture of apology before folding it and placing it back on the desk i'm not careless i muttered to my friends on the shelves whoever's done this nasty thing of reporting me ought to be ashamed my new optician tells me there's nothing he can do to stop the slow deterioration of my eyesight and because i'd passed my last driving test without anyone noticing now i how i had to squint or lean forward to read the eye chart i presumed that i'd be fine i reckoned i had at least five more years of driving at least five i tell myself firmly deciding to deal with the letter late letter later and take my walk before the fog rolls in no point in getting my knickers in a twist over this i fetched i fetch my keys close the front door and take the stairs down to the lobby on my way out i glance ruefully at buttercup my beloved old porsche parked 
ad admittedly a little more than 18 inches from the crib but what the hell oh i love her already <laughs> okay that brings us to the end of chapter one um and that was our introduction to morayo whom i'm very smitten by already okay absolutely absolutely love that let me know what you thought of that first chapter is it something that enticed you to read this book or pick it up at any point um yeah let's have a chit chat i am intrigued i don't want to lie uh and it looks like a fast read and i really need fast paced reads this year i really need those otherwise thank you so very much for joining me once again i love you very much for choosing me until next time bye now